Hey YouTube, this is Alexander, and today I'm going to be giving you my overview slash review of the Paranoid Android ROM 4.2 Beta 1 for the Nexus 4. So let's go ahead and get started. So as mentioned, this is the Paranoid Android ROM 4.2 Beta 1 based off of Android 4.4.2 for the Nexus 4. Now even though the Nexus 4 is an aging device, rooting your device, uh, rooting your Nexus 4 and slap it on the Paranoid Android ROM definitely speeds it up. It doesn't add a lot of bloatware either. You have three apps that it comes installed with. You have the light bulb, Paranoid Android OTA, uh, as well as the documents to just take a look at some documents. You also get a separate launcher, although the launcher I have seen a couple problems with. It attempts to mimic the Google Now launcher, which is really nice, but the settings doesn't work at all, or at least you can't click it. Now maybe I'm doing something wrong. You guys can leave a comment down below if I am, uh, but I can't get to the settings so you know it's a minor minor bug uh, if it is a bug but really small uh, a really good addition that it does have though is the ability to wake your device using the volume buttons so if you were to navigate to settings and sound you can tick that box right there lock your device and you would also be able to wake your device using the volume buttons which is really really nice just gives you that added customization and flexibility with your device now you do have quick access to the quick toggles, much like on the Android tablets. You got a couple toggles here, and you can enable or disable each toggle however you'd like. And it's really, really simple to do that. You have a nice little uh, square bar next to the uh, uh, up top where you can get back to the notifications uh, area to just toggle them on and off. If you click them, they will actually toggle the specific action on or off. And if you long press, you can jump into the shortcut. So they sort of reversed it from stock Android there, which is really nice because it's a lot better to be able to just tap the icon to turn something on and off rather than having a long press uh, to turn it on and off. Uh, as mentioned, uh, you can uh, toggle certain toggles on and off. It might sound a little weird. Uh, but it's really, really simple to use, and I really enjoy that feature. Now, you do have an immersive mode, which will basically work to hide the notification bar and the nav bar uh, in favor of the Pi controls. Now, Pi controls do take a little bit to get used to, or a little while to get used to, rather. Uh, they'll give you some information, some system information, like your battery, your notifications, the time, uh, Wi-Fi, and also your back, home, and menu button, or I'm sorry, multitasking button. But like I said, it does take a little bit to get used to, a little bit of time to get used to. But once you got them down, it's a really, really nice thing to use, especially if you uh, go for a more minimalist look. These will definitely help to accomplish that look. Now, if I swipe up from the Pi controls and I swipe out of that ring, you can see I can switch where I want the Pi controls to be accessed from by moving my finger over to the half circle and just sort of long pressing or long holding on that half circle and it'll actually switch where the Pi controls uh, can be accessed from whether it be from the left side, the right side, or the bottom of the device. So a really nice addition is the app privacy underneath the system uh, setting. So clicking that will bring you into the app privacy settings area where you can turn off and on uh, certain features of different apps whether they be from the Play Store or some other source or from the system. You can turn on and off location settings for uh, specific apps, uh, their ability to read the contacts or post notifications, anything you want to do basically that it's going uh, that the app will have access to uh, in regards to your privacy, you can at your discretion disable or enable certain ones. Uh, so if you didn't want the camera to ever access the location, you can go ahead and turn that off and that can also save some battery life. So it's a really good option to have for anybody who wants to save battery life or just sort of make sure have full control over the types of uh, access your apps have. Now the next feature is something that's actually been featured on another phone without Roop. Now that's the Moto X. Notification Peak works to mimic the Moto X's active display uh, in an attempt to bring you notifications while keeping your device uh, screen off and just bringing you simple uh, icons to let you know what notifications you have waiting for you once you wake your device fully. So how this works is it's going to go ahead and use a couple different sensors in the phone to sort of wake your device once you pick it up if you've got some notifications waiting for you. So here I have uh, some messaging, uh, I have a me messaging notification waiting for me. If I just pick my device up, it'll go ahead and show me all the notifications that I have waiting for me in the notification bar. And I can even swipe or click through each notification. Uh, so it's a really, really nice addition, and it's also sort of improved upon the Moto X's active display uh, somewhat. I find that it works uh, most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't always work, though. Uh, it's a little cumbersome to work with, but if you get used to how it works, it's definitely a really cool addition. 
Now one minor setback is because this isn't an AMOLED display, it's actually going to turn on all the pixels on the display, so it's really turning on the entire display. It's just making most of it black. Now that can sort of work against your battery life, so just mind uh, you non-AMOLED display users, it might work to uh, sort of kill your battery a little faster, unfortunately. But it's a really nice addition that if you guys don't see any hit on battery, I would really highly suggest uh, enabling it since it is a really cool feature. So a small addition that they've gone ahead and added is in the battery uh, area of the settings. You can switch between three different types of battery toggles, or battery indicators rather. And it, I like it because it's just really simple. The entire ROM is just really simple. There's not a lot going on, but they do add really good things. You also have the ability to maximize widgets on the lock screen and see through the lock screen to whatever you have underneath if you were to unlock your device. Now, if you guys are concerned about privacy, obviously you can have that feature turned off. But for anybody who wants a more minimalist look or you want to be able to see what's underneath the lock screen, uh, this feature is actually worth turning on. It's a really cool feature. And I do wish, though, that you could get rid of that little lock button down there at the bottom somehow, uh, but still be able to, of course, unlock your phone. Uh, but that's just a minor complaint. Maybe they'll work that in there. Maybe they won't. Uh, but again, it looks really cool, and I keep saying that these things look really cool, but they really are. This is a ROM that I really, really enjoy using. I haven't actually enjoyed using a ROM in a long time, and this is one of them that I really enjoy using. Um, it doesn't have a lot going on. There aren't too many settings. There aren't a bunch of uh, things just shoved into this ROM. It seems like it's been really well managed, and they take a lot of care in their uh, device or in their ROM. You do also have a quick way to disable all the apps. The multitasking button becomes a clear all button, which is really cool. Uh, but I do notice, I don't know if it's a feature or a bug, the most recent app actually stays there until you either swipe it away or press that clear all button once more, and then you have all of them cleared. Minor thing, but it's a really nice addition to have that uh, multitasking button turn into a clear all button rather than having some weird clear all button somewhere else on the screen. It just makes sense. Now, you do also have the ability to change the color of the notification LED. You can change it for every app that comes in. You can change it from that plain white color to any color for all apps. Or you can specify uh, the color for a certain app. So if I wanted to have the pulse notification LED be blue all the time for all apps, I would just switch it just like so, and it'd be blue for all incoming apps uh, or all incoming notifications that are going to use the LED. Uh, or if I wanted to have maybe Hangouts be green, and all of the others be red, I can also do that just by toggling the use custom values uh, tick box and that will allow me to select certain applications and change their LED notification light for when I do get a notification from that uh, app. So if I want to have Hangouts be green, I can just go here, switch to green, and bam, I'm done. The notification LED for whenever I get a new Hangout message will now be green while all the other ones can be whatever color I specify. So it's a really cool addition, and this has been present for a long time now since Android, almost since the beginning of Android LED notifications uh, as an app in the Play Store. But it's really nice to see this built into the ROM and in such an easy way to get to. It's right there in these notifications, and it's just a really great addition. So lastly, if we scroll down to developer options in the settings, you'll see we have art. Now art is actually here, of course. <laughs> um, but Paranoid Android, the ROM itself doesn't actually support art, so it's more of an experimental type thing. So if you guys want to enable art, of course you can, but just be cautious when you do this. Maybe back up your ROM, ROM before you decide to switch, uh, because it, you can run into crashes, you can run into all sorts of craziness, uh, depending on your device. So be sure to just be safe if you're going to enable art. Now, I personally haven't had any issues, but again, I've only been running this uh, ROM for a few days now, testing it out, putting it through its paces. Um, which also is another reason why I didn't mention battery life at all. I don't want to steer you guys wrong in the battery life department. So if maybe one of you knows about that, you can leave a comment. But anyway, art, as I've been saying, uh, is an experimental feature. I haven't had any problems, but I also haven't used the device as my daily driver. So just be cautious if you decide to use art. So that was Paranoid Android 4.2 Beta 1 for the Nexus 4. It's a really, really nice ROM. It adds a couple things. Uh, but those few things that it does add really help to make the device just a better device overall. It's got a couple bugs, like the settings not working, uh, not supporting R, and maybe possibly taking a hit on battery life in some areas. But it's really a nice ROM that I would use if this were my daily device. I really enjoy this ROM, and I would encourage you guys to definitely check it out if you're looking for a really nice minimalist type ROM that adds some really nice features. 
It's going to go ahead and end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on new videos that I upload. And be sure to leave a comment if you guys, uh, maybe I missed a feature and you guys want to let other people know, or you guys have a suggestion for a future video, maybe a ROM video, be sure to leave a comment. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, don't forget to follow me on Google+, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, guys. Peace.